Pastor Eric. We're going to continue our series online today uh, with uh, our Better Relationship series and connecting. And it's a little different today. Uh, a lot of our key leaders are sick, so uh, we're just doing virtual this weekend. And uh, as the pastor, I would rather be there. It's easier for me. Um, but today we're going to talk about valuing differences. And I want to just talk about something really quick. I don't know if you can see. Let me see if you can. we can glue this down. Uh, I don't know if you remember learning how to ride a bike. You know, one of the things about learning how to ride a bike is that initially it's pretty dangerous. Now, when I learned how to ride a bike, uh, we had training wheels that we put on the bike. And then eventually my dad loosened up the training wheels. So slowly I was able to learn more and more. But every once in a while I still fell over and ran into stuff, sometimes on accident, sometimes on purpose. But the truth is, when we look at this idea of our differences, one of the big things we're going to look at is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 today, and we're going to talk about this whole idea of our giftings. You know, how has God made you? But the truth is that most people, or many people, never use their gifts. You know, they joke about uh, oftentimes that only 10% of the people uh, do uh, 90% of the work of the church. And one of the great things about our church is that's absolutely not true. There are many more people who work and do things at our church. So if you're one of those at our church who work hard and you're part of a team, maybe you're part of the greeting team or the children's ministry team or the youth team or the service team or the A team, or maybe you're part of the presentation team or somebody else I'm forgetting, uh, you know, um, hospitality team and people who who help with family promise, all those things. If you're part of one of those teams, I hope today you'll understand why even on the days you don't think you matter, that you matter, and also that you will look at ways to uh, become better at your gifts and maybe some things that you thought over the years where the enemy, uh, or maybe even yourself, you try to distract yourself from doing what really matters. Here's what I know. If you're really going to enjoy the Christian life to the fullest, I mean have joy. See, if if you get on a bike, it's dangerous at first, but why do we want to ride it? Because we know after a while it gets to be fun. We enjoy riding bikes, and a lot of us, especially as kids, enjoy riding bikes. When you go to serve, there's risk in it. There's risk that you can get hurt. And many of you know my story that in the past I was hurt uh, by a lot of people But the truth is, then you have a choice. Am I going to quit using the gifts God has given me? Or am I going to say, God, I want to do what you've called me to do, so I'm going to continue. So here's the thing. You risk failure when you begin to study gifts. But just like riding a bike, I want to encourage you to just begin, start somewhere to learn, to really connect with people. This is what we're going to talk about today. And use your gifts. You've got to realize three things. God uses differences to bless. You are valuable and needed. That's you. You're valuable and needed. And you need to seek to grow in the greater gifts. I want you to try to use your gifts. If you've never used a gift at a church, I want you to try. Even if you're not a member at our church, I want to encourage you maybe to join our greeting team or join one of the teams where you can just start to use your spiritual gifts, even in a small way, to connect with others. So let's pick up with number one. Number one, God uses difference. God uses differences to bless. Here's what it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, and that word for service is where we get the word deacon. It means to serve. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, and that means there's different kind of power. There's different kinds of energy. Some of you have lots of energy. Some of you have a little bit of energy. God just wants you to use what you have. And then it says, There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for what reason? For the common good. So why does God fill us with the Spirit? It's not just for us to feel good about, hey, I can do this great thing. Oh, I can, I can, uh, I have this great gift of service. And boy, I can preach or I can teach and look who I am. No, no. It's for the greater good. When we use our gifts properly, it's not focused on what am I getting out of it. It's on, hey, how am I helping others to grow? Because here's the deal. When you really use the gifts God's given you, you're not just living for today. You are leaving not just a legacy for the next generation. You are leaving 
a legacy for eternity. So I want to encourage you, think of your gifts in the light of eternity. And those days when you're discouraged or you're afraid as you use your gifts, or maybe you fall off your bike when you're using your gifts, on those days, I want to encourage you just to do what God's called you to do. Here's one thing you need to realize. I heard this from another pastor. The Christian life is not difficult. It's impossible. You can't do it without God's power and without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you don't have these gifts. These are not just natural gifts. They're inspired and encouraged by the Spirit. You may have some natural things that you know how to do, but through the Holy Spirit, you have power you've never had. In Romans 12, it's another place it talks about spiritual gifts. It says this, For just as each of us have one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's encouraged, then encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So in Romans chapter 12, Paul is saying to the early church, hey, if God's given you a gift, just do it. I mean, you thought Nike came up with that, but or Nike. Uh, but the truth is, Paul said, just do what you're called to do. So the question is, are we doing what God is called to do? You know, the thing we don't realize is God does not call us. Uh, he calls us to unity, but not un uniformity. We are all different. It, it, uh, uh, many churches want everybody to be the same. You know, just get in line, everybody act the same, do the same things, be the same person. That would be like going to Baskin Robbins, where they have, I think it's 31 or 37 or 3 billion flavors, and saying, I only want vanilla. <laughs> the truth is, that would be foolish, right? You would go to Baskin Robbins and you want to try the different flavors. Maybe you're a chunky monkey person, maybe you're a person who likes cookies and cream. Maybe you're the person who likes cookie dough. I'm married to one of those cookie dough people. And, uh, and the truth is, we're all different in our preferences, but the truth is, we're also different in our gift. Begin to discover the gifts God's given you. Now, I want to show you some unhelpful views about gifts because the enemy will always try to discourage you from using what God's given you. And here's how he'll do it. You look at other people and go, why are you different? Why are you different than me? Or, God can't use you. you. You've messed up. You've blown it. You're not where you should be. God can't use you. Or, I'm not appreciated. You know, we get to the point where we're serving and we're working and our dogs are barking. And we say, I am not appreciated, so I'm going to quit. And the truth is, when you recognize that you're not appreciated, then you have a choice. Am I going to serve God or am I going to serve people? And then the final thing is, hey, I'm just going to do what's good for me. Maybe it's easier for me to be left out. Maybe today is hard. Maybe I don't feel like doing something. If we do that, we will not use the gifts God's called us to do. Now, here's some helpful views. I'm glad you're different than me. Did you know God can use your gifts? We need to remind people all the time, hey, God wants to use you. If, somebody, if you're serving in an area and you've not said to somebody lately, hey, you really should help. Maybe you help with greeting and you think, why don't more people greet? Well, it could be that you need to invite somebody and say, why don't you help greet? Why don't you help in the children's ministry? Why don't you help in this ministry and pull people in? Too often, we're so busy serving in our ministry that we never think of bringing somebody alongside. Why? Because once again, we're leaving an eternal legacy. Remember that God called you. So if he calls you to something, you do what he's called you to do. Just be faithful in it. There'll be days you don't feel like doing it. There'll be days you're discouraged. There might even be days, just like on a bike, you fall off the bike. Either you do something dumb or somebody pushes you off the bike. Do what God's called you to do. And then finally, what's best for the church? What does the church really need? Why did Jesus wash his disciples' feet? Because they were dirty and nobody was there to wash them. So Jesus washed them their feet. We're going to get to number two in just a second. Point two, you are valuable and needed. You ever really look at chess pieces? You know, uh, here's a little horse. I know there's a name for it. I think it's a uh, knight or something uh, or something. And here's a little castle and uh, they move different ways, right? This can go up and over and this goes straight, straight, straight. Each piece has its own moves, its own ways of doing things. Listen, one of the things we need to learn, not only in our gifts, but just in life. The truth is, you and I need to recognize that 
We are unified in what we are called to do, but we're separate in who we are. If you're in a marriage, you need to understand that you're separate from your wife. When my wife and I go to any theme park, uh, uh, Disney, for example, uh, she loves to ride the roller coasters, and I don't. But we don't mind. She, I go with her, and we get in line. She goes to the line. I go and sit. Sometimes I put headphones in. Sometimes I study. Sometimes I make phone calls. Sometimes I send texts. And guess what? I am just as happy not going on that ride with her. And she doesn't have to sit with me for me to feel like a person. Why? Because I'm my own person. Listen, you are valuable in who you are, but you're also needed with other people. My wife makes my life better, but we don't have to do everything together and we're not the same person. You're not the same as anyone else. Listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Just as the body... The one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made of one part, but many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Listen, If you want to find out if your pinky toe matters, get up in the middle of the night and hit it on something. (laughs) And all of a sudden you'll go, ow, my pinky toe matters. I noticed it mattered. Listen, in the body of Christ, we're all different parts. And just because somebody's up front where everybody can see them, it doesn't make them any more important than that person who's serving behind the scenes. Listen, no one may notice the things that you do, but God notices. No one may notice how you are using your gifts. You may even take abuse sometimes when you do what God's called you to do. I read a story this week about a girl who was working at a grocery store and somebody came up to her and said, hey, do you have this special kind of cottage cheese? To which she said, I'm sorry, we're all out. And then the person went on to tell her what a horrible, lazy person she was because they didn't have cottage cheese. What? (laughs) sometimes even when you're just doing your job, even when you're doing what you're called to do, you have a chance of being attacked by somebody who doesn't recognize your value. Don't let them set your value. God has already set your value. And don't just do things when people appreciate it. Do what God's called you to do. Be the part of the body God's called you to be. We need healthy togetherness, but then we also need healthy separation. We need to understand we're individuals. Now, here's some unhelpful thoughts. If you want to quit, here's some things you can think. I'm not needed. Nobody needs me. Nobody noticed when I was gone. Nobody noticed when I wasn't there. I'm not valuable. I don't matter. What I do is not a big deal. I'm not going to use my gifts. Why should I use my gifts? I mean, gosh, there's a chance I could get hurt if I get on that bicycle. Why would I want to do that? And then everyone should be me. (laughs) We think everybody sometimes should be like us. But here's some helpful thoughts. I'm needed. Listen, you need to know regardless of what somebody said to you, what you tell yourself, maybe what a parent told you, maybe even what a pastor told you, you are needed in the body. You have a gift. Maybe it's to bring soup to a neighbor. Maybe it's to greet at a door. Maybe it's to help in the kitchen. Maybe it's to help with the youth group. Maybe it's to help with the sound. Maybe it's help to presentation. Maybe it's to help on the music team. Maybe it's to help pick up trash as we come into church. Maybe it's to help with the A team as we pick up things. Maybe it's to give blood in the blood drive. There are all kinds of ways to serve and serve our community. Just use what God's called you. You are needed you are valuable. Are you using your gifts? I'm using my gifts. And recognize that God uses differences. Now, we'll get on to point three here. You just see what happens as I try to film. Uh, Buster is just watching me and squealing. I had to lock them in because they were running out and barking. We got a few people working at the house today, and they were barking like crazy. Look at him. He's so pitiful. I'm sorry, Buster. You'll have to wait. We'll be done in a minute. 
<laughs> you can see my mom's dog behind him too. I don't know if you can see him too. <laughs> That's funny. I just wanted you to see what's going on. So we're on to point three. Here it is. So we've talked about how God uses differences to bless. So you don't have to be like everybody else. Let God use your difference. Number two, you are valuable and needed. Don't let anyone tell you that you are not valuable. God loved the world so much that he sent Jesus for you. And then number three, seek to grow in greater gifts. And I want to add this. Hey, seek to grow in your gifts. Whatever God has shown you to do, whether it's serving, learn to serve the best you can. If it's teaching, learn how to teach. If you're a teacher and you have a gift of teaching and you're not teaching, remember, you're accountable to God, not the pastor. I'm not going to hound you or harass you. If you have the gift of giving and that's your gift, but you're not giving, guess what? God's called all of us to give, but some people have a special gift of giving. Hey, go out of your way to give because God's called you to it. The pastor's not the one holding you accountable for that. So seek to grow in greater gifts. Here's what I feel like, and I don't know if you know what inertia is, but inertia is this idea that when you're going forward, like you're in a car and you hit the brakes and all of a sudden you go forward, or when you first take off in a car, you go back. Listen, we all have spiritual, physical, emotional inertia. If you want to learn to work out, the best thing you can do is start moving. Maybe start taking a walk. Maybe every day, just get up, push yourself just a little bit. Why? Because once you start moving, there's a tendency to keep moving. But guess what happens when you stop? You tend to stop. Just like when a rocket takes off, so much fuel is used on just the first few feet of launching that rocket. Why? Because it's all the power to get it off the ground. We're the same way. So as far as serving goes, just start serving and ask God to help you to grow in your gifts and especially in the greater gifts. Listen to what it says. 1 Corinthians 12, and then we're going to pick up in verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles. By the way, the word apostles, people use it for all kinds of things. It means one sent. We would probably call uh, missionaries apostles. It's somebody who's sent out from the church to other places. The second is prophets. Now, the word for prophets, it's not like telling the future. It's somebody who speaks from God. So basically the pastor, or that's me, uh, when we open God's word, we're saying, hey, this is what God says in his word, and the Holy Spirit will say to you, yeah, that one was for you, okay? And so that's a prophet. And then it says, third, teachers. Teachers are those who instruct, maybe teach the Bible, go out of their way to teach. And then it says, miracles, gifts of healing, helping, guidance, different kind of tongues. And then he asks this question, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret? And then he says, now eagerly, desire the greater gifts. Here's what's funny. Over the years, I've seen more people desire the gifts that are at the end of that list than wanting to be a teacher, than wanting to be a servant, than wanting to be sent out as a missionary. He says, hey, ask God, God, would you help me learn how to teach? How do you learn how to teach? First, you have to learn. First, you have to study. First, you have to spend time in God's word. And so how do we desire the greater gifts? We spend time learning about God and learning from his word. Think about this. If we had a band and it was all tubas, uh, I like tubas, but can you imagine a band full of tubas? I'm sure it's happened and somebody's done it. There's probably a Netflix clip about tuba band. But you know what? After a while, it would get kind of boring. The truth is, in church, we need all the different parts, all the instruments. Now, here are some destructive demands that people make. I'm not helping. Well, that's between you and God, but the truth is, God's called you to help. So when you're not helping, guess what? You're going to lose the joy of riding the bicycle. And so, I'm not helping. My gift isn't important. I don't want to change. Hey, listen, you're supposed to desire the greater gifts, which means, God, would you change me? Would you help me to grow? If you're in the same place you were a year ago, doing the same thing you did a year ago, then you're not growing. So begin to say, God, I desire to be more of who you want me to be. Show me how to grow. And then finally, I'm on my own. I don't, want to, I don't want to help anybody else. I want to be in my cubicle. I want to come to church, sit down, leave. I want everybody to leave me alone in between. I mean, if the pastor even says hi to me, I might get offended. Leave me alone. God wants you to use your gift. So here's how we can develop desires. Here it is. I'm looking to help. Hey, I want to help in this area. Hey, so-and-so didn't call me back. Well, call them back. <laughs> Check on them. I've had people come to me and say, hey, I had signed up on a list a few weeks ago. What happened? And we found out we lost the list. Hey, we've had that happen. <laughs> and what the enemy will tell you is they didn't want you to help. No, that's not true. We just lost the list. Have you ever lost a list? 
All gifts are important. You need to recognize if you're gifted, you're, you're a Christian, then you're gifted and your gift's important. I'm seeking to improve. Do you want to grow? And then finally, I'm part of this body. So I want to help other people. Why? Because I'm making a difference for eternity. Here's the deal. When somebody first comes to church and they've never been to our church, here's what's going to happen. They're going to show up. They're going to park in our parking lot. Somebody, hopefully, will say hi to them. Hey, they're using their gifts of hospitality. Hey, good to have you here. As they come into the church, there's a greeter there who hands them a bulletin and says, good morning. They're not just talking to their friend. They've hopefully got a mint. <laughs> and they say, good morning. We're glad to have you here. What happens? Instantly, that person, their fear begins to leave. Why? Because they've been welcomed and they've been greeted. Now they've been given something they can look at. kind of gives them an order of events so they feel a little bit safer. Oh, and then guess what? There's people that have coffee and donuts if they want a donut, maybe even some grapes some weeks, you know? And, and so what do they do? They go and get coffee and a donut. Why? Because something about, and you've seen guys at parties, they, they hold that uh, uh, juice or coffee in front of them. Why? That's kind of their protection. So people get that. They're like, wow, you can have a donut in church and they sit down in church and what happens? Then we have a music team that, that sings to God's glory and their heart begins to turn towards God. Maybe they've been away from God for years and all of a sudden their, their heart begins to soften. And then what happens? Maybe the announcements are made or, or somebody gives the message focus. Maybe Rodney or Steve give a word and all of a sudden they say, hey, these are regular people and God is working on them. Maybe God's going to work on me and then a few more songs and then... Once again, we discuss God's word and God puts his finger on their heart and says, I'm working on you. And they leave and decide, you know what, I'm going to go back because something changed in me. Why? Because all those people use their gifts to help that person be drawn into God's presence. All of those people were important. From the person who swept the floor before they got here, to the person who put the sign out, to the person who picked up the trash in the parking lot and cleaned the bathroom, made sure they were greeted. Listen, if none of that happened, the person would walk in feeling rejected. But because everybody used their different gifts, what happened? A person felt welcome and loved, and maybe, just maybe, God helps them to find their way home to Him, and they spend eternity in heaven. Maybe they're already a Christian, but they've been away from church, and maybe they've been mean. Maybe they've been separated from their family. Maybe they've had a lot of unforgiveness, and God begins to work on their heart and change them. Why? Because of all these people who've worked together. Know that God has given you a gift. You are different. Use that difference to bless others. You are valuable and needed. The church needs you. God, you are part of his body. And listen, if you're not a part of Surfside, I encourage you, find a place to serve. Find a place to use your gifts and then seek to grow. God, I want to grow in my gifts. Let's close in prayer today. Father, thank you for this time together. I pray that you use this message, even though it's just online today, I know that your spirit can touch us wherever we are. I pray that you would touch each person that heard this message today. Lord, that you would show them what gifts they have and they'd begin to use them. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have a 301 class soon where we'll talk about different spiritual gifts, not just gifts of service, but different spiritual gifts you can use if you want to grow in that. That'll be coming up in about two months, and we'll let you know about that. Listen, normally you can give, uh, uh, but today you can give online. And so you can look for that link. It's either here or it's on our website at surfsidecommunity.com, and uh, there'll be a link there, and you can give that way. Thanks for paying attention today. Thanks for being here. We love you guys. If you need anything or if you want to know more of what it means to know Jesus Christ and have a relationship with him, just send me an email or send a post, and I'll get in touch with you. All right. Thanks so much. Love you.